Let me ask you about the small family farm. Does it have a future? Well, don't be fooled when you hear, you know, all these um, promotional proclamations about the farm bill that the farm bill is about the family farmer. Farm bills have been, have been proclaimed in the name of the family farmer for so long that we don't realize that, you know, we've lost nearly four million family farms since the 50s. As a direct result of these get big or get out subsidy policies, um, but you know, I do. I think that um, the, those farmers that are making it, the small family farmer um, in, in, in certain areas of the country, they're more profitable, they're growing at a faster rate than these big mega farms. Um, does the family farm have a future? I, I, I definitely think so. I think it could be in certain areas a good time to get into grass farming for sure. I mean, there's certain areas of the country where um, demand is outstripping supply for grass-fed meat, grass-fed dairy products, and um, certain organic products. But um, somehow the playing field has to be leveled. And right now, the small guy who's doing it right is at a huge disadvantage to the big mega farm that's doing it wrong and it's getting hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even millions of dollars from subsidies. Again, that just seems like a no-brainer to me. I don't understand why this has gone on for so long. Money. What has kept, What has kept this sort of imbalance in place for so long? Well, you know, it's been, a, uh, I think that uh, the, the hunger lobby and the commodity states have walked lockstep for, you know, a, a good many farm bills and they've made this precarious balance work. And I think you, we're starting to see cracks in, in the alliance, in the wall. Because the commodities aren't feeding the hungry. Well, they're delivering them calories. And these calories are extremely important. I mean, 40 million people, 12% of all households, half of them are kids that are needy. Um, it's a low-wage supplement. Um, so in all seriousness, it, it's, it's, you know, it's vital to the health of these people. But um, calories are not nutrition. And I think that's becoming increasingly obvious. We have to find a way to increase access increase affordability and increase the nutritional values of the foods that everybody's eating but you know the poor are particularly um, afflicted because they're li they have they have oftentimes just a lot less access to fresh foods and they you know they have limited dollars and they have to spend what they can and oftentimes the cheapest thing is the worst for them what drives changes to farm policy is it science? Is it new information? Is it new attitudes among consumers? Well, certainly big business has a big, big um, role in that. They put $100 million every year into the agribusiness lobby in Washington. So every single appropriation season, you know, those agribusiness lobbies are pumping money in to change our policy. But there have been historically um, some, some very critical moments. Um, John F. Kennedy, one of his first administration's um, acts was to renew the food stamp program from, from the early days. And that actually has become this, this huge um, political wedge inside of Washington, D.C. that protects the, the, the nutrition programs and the nutrition title of the Farm Bill. It's 50% of the, uh, of, of the bill. Um, in the 1980s, there was a big conservation push and conservation has increasingly become a bigger title of farm bill spending. Um, and right now, I think we're looking at health. Like I said, this obesity epidemic, the dietary related maladies that we have that are a direct result of, um, of really too much corn and too much really bad food um, subsidized by, by the farm bill. That could be a wedge that really changes um, the way we look at the kind of foods that, that we're supporting and, and the um, impacts of them. That's going to that's gonna require that the health community weigh in because, you know, it's, 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 their, it's their turf, it's their life at stake. Um, energy is going to be another huge wedge, this bioenergy thing, and it could go in a very negative direction. 
Um, but I also think another wedge is going to be schools. Increasingly you find schools really concerned about let's start with the food that we eat. Let's, let's start right there and let's make these new kinds of connections between local farms and, and our kids. Um, and then there's the whole local farms organic grass-fed movement that, that, that is also emerging and, and that's where I really think we should be putting our money. Organics. If you're not organic, you shouldn't get any money in my opinion. Um, if you're not a grass farmer, you know, make it on your own. You guys have had subsidies for decades to make that work. What we really need to do is get our land out of corn, back onto grass, get our animals out of these, um, you know, these animal gulags where there's 20,000 in a single space, put them back on the grass, and all the health and environmental and economic benefits just flow from doing the right thing in the first place.